It is a great pleasure to share with you the preliminary result of this project that received a research grant from the CJD Foundation in 2021. I take this opportunity to thank the families, the president, Debbie Jobs, the medical director, Brian Appleby, and the board of directors for the incredible effort they make every year for carrying out the mission of the foundation. I also want to thank the CJD Foundation for referring to us many of the patients that we have recruited for this MRI study. Brain MRI is one of two tests of choice for the diagnosis of sporadic CJD with high diagnostic sensitivity and specificity. However, early clinical diagnosis of CJD is complicated by the presence of several subtypes, which vary by clinical presentation, histopathology, brain lesion distribution and propagation, and illness duration. In this uh, uh, MRI, you can appreciate the bright signal abnormality in the cortical ribbon of the occipital and parietal lobe that is so unique about CJD and allow us to make the diagnosis. In a follow-up study, you can appreciate that there are the lesion have extended to involve also the frontal lobe and the coded nucleus and the putamen on both sides of the brain. This is what we call propagation of the illness that can, show, can be shown very nicely with MRI. We have uh, recently shown in an article that the CJD subtype can be preliminary diagnosed with MRI at the bedside using a diagnostic algorithm. Here in the slides, you can appreciate that the different subtype, MM1, BB2, or MM2, have uh, shown a different distribution of the lesions on the diffusion weighted images. According to the algorithm, the positive predictive value was about 81% for the diagnosis of MM1, 91% for VV2, and a little bit lower, 60% for MM2. I want to remind that the definitive diagnosis of subtype must be confirmed by tissue examination due to some of the degree of overlapping among the different subtypes. In another study, we have shown that the epicenter and the trajectories of prion brain lesion are specific to the CJD subtypes. Of interest, the two most common subtypes, MM1 and DV2, have opposite direction of propagation. Here you can see that in the stage one, two of the disease, the lesions start in the parietal lobe in MM1, and then they extend to the frontal lobe and later to the striatum and the thalami. On the contrary, in VV2, the disease starts in the cerebellum, in the thalamus, and the, in the caudate nucleus, and then only in later stages, they extend to involve the frontal cortex and then later the parietal and occipital cortex. The first aim of this uh, research study was to define homogeneous groups of CJD patients with similar epicenter and primary lesion propagation as estimated from diffusion MRI. We applied an artificial intelligent method that identified the epicenter and the trajectory of primary lesion propagation from a data collection of patients with pure CJD subtype. We then validated the result of this method with the ground truth, the autopsy confirmed CJD subtype made at NPDPSC. We study a cohort of 488 CJD patients at different disease stages and with different brain lesion distribution on diffusion MRI. Here you can see the brain of these multiple patients with different distribution of their lesions. We adopted a machine learning method named subtype and stage inference, sustain, to automatically define groups with similar disease propagation in a data-driven way. And if you can follow this animation, what the computer does, try to identify how many groups 
of patients we have with similar disease propagation, and then it will follow the propagation of the lesion. As you can see with this line, if we start from these patients, uh, you can see this is the progression of the lesion according to this group. Then from this patient, you have another type of uh, propagation of the lesion and so on. Sustain identified five groups of uh, CJD patients. Three groups had initial parietal involvement, but had a distinct trajectory of propagation. The first group that we name classic MM1 uh, had the epicenter in the parietal lobe and the frontal and striatum were involved early. The thalamus and the cerebellum were involved only last. As you can see, when we compare this uh, with the subtime known by autopsy, we found that in this group, there were mainly patients with the MM1 and ND1 subtypes. The second group that we name a patient with mainly cortex lesion, uh, the epicenter was still in the parietal lobe and all the cortical region were involved early while involvement of the striatum, thalamus, and cerebellum was rare. And here you can see that in this group, we found mainly patients with MM1, MV1, MM2, or MV2C. A third group that we call cortex and early limbic involvement, the frontal and limbic system were involved early along the course of the disease, while the striatum, the thalamus, and the cerebellum were involved only in later stages. Here you see that this group uh, had patients with MM1 and also with the very rare BB1 subtype. The other two groups had the initial subcortical involvement, group four in the striatum, group five in the thalamus and in the cerebellum, then the propagation of the lesion follow a similar trajectory from subcortical station to the cerebral cortex. These two groups uh, included patients uh, mainly with the BB2 and the MD2K component uh, subtypes, uh, as you can see from, uh, from these slides. Sustain is a powerful tool to identify CJD patients with similar MRI features. Thus, it has potential to be used for early selection of patients for clinical trials. To summarize our results, MM1 was the prevalent subtype in the three groups with classic, mainly cortex, cortex and early limbic uh, involvement. BB2 and MB2K were the prevalent subtypes in the other two groups with subcortex to cortex lesion propagation. The aim of the second study was to investigate the mechanism underpinning the propagation of prion lesion in the brain. We tried to address the following question. Does lesion propagation follow major anatomical connection among affected brain regions? Or does it affect primarily highly connected brain regions in extension of the abs? Is it the same disease mechanism for every subtype or MRI defined group? The brain is represented as a network with nodes, the brain regions and links the neural, neuronal connection, as you can see in this cartoon. We simulate the spread of prion pathology starting from one node of the network and following the links according to the strength of the connection. Changing the starting node, the seed or the epicenter, affects the order in which the regions are reached, leading to different progression patterns. For each seed, we record the resulting propagation trajectory and we measure its correlation with those found by sustain. 
the results show that propagation trajectories determined by the network model met, by the network model match those found by sustain in two of the five groups identified by sustain and in particular in the mainly cortex that is the one with mm1 and mm2 and in the cortex with an early involvement of the limbic system that uh, is the one where there are patients with mm1 and vv1 in the other three groups probably the mechanism must be different since the correlation and the p-values were not uh, very high very satisfactory Other disease mechanisms will be considered in the prosecution of, of this project to explain the mechanism of lesion propagation in the other three groups. We are going to evaluate the uh, degree of centrality. The more a brain region is connecting to the other, the earlier it may be affected. Closeness centrality, the less distant the brain region is to the other, the earlier it may be affected. And also we'll try to use other metrics to measure the influence of a node, for instance, quantifying is spreading power. In conclusion, the identification of different possible epicenter of the disease in the brain, even within the same subtype, may facilitate an earlier and more precise diagnosis. Knowledge of the predicted trajectory of lesion spreading will inform a patient management and prognosis. Will also provide important benefits for prion disease surveillance and a useful criteria for selecting and stratifying patients into arms of future clinical trials. The heterogeneity of spreading mechanism across prion disease subtypes that we show in this preliminary study Father suggests that therapeutic strategies should take into account subtype difference. I want to acknowledge the Jeffrey Smith Memorial Research Grant, the Sherry Maxwell Fabian Memorial Grant, Walter William Memorial Research Grant, the Stride for CJD Grant, and finally the CJD Foundation Grant for providing the grant that enable us to perform this study. And also I want to thank uh, my collaborators at the Best Neurological Institute in Milano, at the NPDPSC in Cleveland, in particular Brian Appleby and Pierluigi Gambetti, uh, the colleagues from the uh, University College of London and King's College London uh, that provided uh, assistance for the sustained model and finally, Larry Schomberger for the Center for Disease Control and Prevention in Atlanta. Thank you very much.